thought this sounded strange but interesting. This is from Unresolved Mysteries on Reddit. And this is posted by the user Winter Lilabeth. Teenage girl agrees to meet a much older man. She fails to show up for dinner and he reports her missing. Angela Sigrid Ramsey. In 1977, Angela was 16 years old when she went missing. She would have been 60 years old now. She was five foot three and around 115 pounds. Angela hitchhiked from her hometown of Columbia, South Carolina to DeLand, Florida in June of 1977 to visit friends. She stayed at the Boulevard Motel on Woodland Boulevard for two days beginning June the 19th. Angela was sunbathing at the motel pool when she met a much older man who asked her to go out to dinner. She happily accepted and they set up a date. She was reported missing on June the 21st when she failed to show up for her dinner date with this older man. Upon searching her motel room, police discovered that all of her belongings, such as her clothing and jewelry, were still there. There was also a photo of Angela herself taken at the hotel swimming pool. The photo was taken by the man that Angela was to have dinner with. Investigators also discovered a letter Angela had written to her best friend in South Carolina, but she never had mailed it. She said she missed her family and friends in Columbia and that she missed her mother. Authorities interviewed the man who had reported Angela missing and said he was not a suspect in her case. He also found her motel room key, which he turned over to investigators. Angela's father was an officer in the United States Army. Because the family traveled extensively, she had many friends across the country. Her mother told authorities that her daughter had hitchhiked to Florida with truckers and then stayed with a friend in Florida before checking into the Boulevard Motel. This reminds me of a show that I watched one time, a movie. I think the name of it was Freedom. And it was about a 15-year-old girl who was around the same time, around the 70s. She pretty much lived a free lifestyle. Um, she didn't really have any authority figures in her life. Her mother let her come and go pretty much as she pleased. And she decided that she wanted to become an adult and, a, you know, a legal adult. So her mother sign the papers, and the show just goes on to show her, the movie rather, it was a movie, it just went on to show the choices that she made at playing as an adult at that young age, but it just reminds me of how much different things were in the 70s than they are today. We would be absolutely freaking out if a, a 15, 16 year old girl hitchhiked across two, three states with truck drivers to from South Carolina to Florida to hang out with friends. Um, parents now, I mean, of course, everybody now would have a cell phone, but I, I mean, we all know the dangers that are out there now. I think in the 70s, Life was just a lot more relaxed. It was that, I hate to use certain terms, but it was kind of that hippie mentality where everybody was just good to each other. And But I think that they weren't really thinking about like the Manson family and Ted Bundy. This was around the time he was out there, you know. So it's just strange to read that. It was almost just like, well, it's perfectly normal, you know. So let's finish this story here. Angela's boyfriend apparently offered her money before she left, 
but she declined. During her visit, her boyfriend's family described her as a well-mannered and polite teenager. Foul play is suspected. Angela was last known to be at the motel in DeLand, Florida. Angela has not been seen or heard from since. She had brown hair and brown eyes. Now this is edited to add on the 30th anniversary of her disappearance in 2007. Investigators have re-interviewed witnesses including the man from the motel who is now a corrections officer in Florida, but there have been no new leads. Every year on her birthday, Ramsey's mother places a photo of her daughter on the dining room table. She surrounds it with roses and she prays for her daughter to come home. She still has the letter that is yellowed and torn that her daughter never got a, a chance to send to her. In the letter, it reads, I really miss my mama. If you have any information, you may contact Daytona Beach, Florida, Volusia County Sheriff's Office in Daytona Beach. Um, 386-254-1537. White female. She was 16 years old at the time she went missing. Five foot three, one fifteen pound, one hundred and fifteen pounds. She had blondish brown hair with brown eyes. Her top canine teeth overlap her front teeth. She has a small scar on the left side of her face. A possible match. This is from the Doe Network. This is from Grateful Doe on Reddit. A possible match between Angela Sigrid Ramsey and a Broward County, Florida, Jane Doe, discovered in 1982. Rules out means that people will find cases of missing, of, of discovered people, like remains discovered or unidentified people who have been discovered. And they compare them to missing people, and they rule them out based on location, age, height, weight, eye color, uh, tattoos, distinguishing. And they can also, if they if they're able to, if there's DNA that has been tested, they can also rule that out through DNA. So what this, this is what she's saying. She's just asking if anyone knows if this Broward County Jane Doe has been ruled out. Angela Ramsey vanished in 1977. Five years later, the body of a woman between the ages of 11 and 20 was found in Papano Beach, Florida, which would be about three and a half hours away from where Angela disappeared. So that would mean that Angela disappeared but had remained alive for up to five years because the remains of this person were only deceased by a couple of weeks. The remains were not recognizable, but a composition was created. So in the comments, these people are saying they don't think... Um, that it's the same person because the teeth are different. This is on Wikipedia fandom. Broward County Jane Doe was a young woman found deceased in Florida in 1982. She had a healed fracture of one vertebrae in her mid-back. It may have occurred as the result of a car accident or a file from a height of around 10 feet. Um, examination of her teeth indicated that she was a smoker. She was found wearing a blue and orange striped long sleeve shirt and a size 32 maiden form natural colored bra. She was wearing a thin gold necklace with brown beads. 
So the victim was found floating face down in the Rinker Rock Pit Pond on 7000 Northwest 16th Lane in Florida on June the 20th of 1982. Her estimated a, a length of death was two weeks. She was not her state of remains were not recognizable. She had decomposition. The cause of death was homicide by asphyxiation. The victim's dental um, dentals were that she had several fillings and that one of her bottom molars had been extracted. So DNA was collected and fingerprints. So in June of 1977, 16-year-old Angela hitchhiked from her home in South Carolina to Florida. For two days, she stayed at the Boulevard Motel. She had befriended a worker there who helped her. She was reported missing on June the 21st um, when she failed to show up for a dinner date with the man from the hotel. So he reports her missing. He had her hotel room key. He says he found her hotel room key. Is it possible that he shows up at her door at the hotel and says, are you ready to go to dinner? She says, give me a few minutes to finish getting ready. And at that point, he makes his way into the room, attacks her, murders her, removes her body in some manner. I, I wouldn't know, you know. I mean, I guess it's, or maybe they went out to dinner. Maybe they did go to dinner. And they returned to the hotel, and they went into her room, and, or he got her key in some way, made his way into her room, and then attacked her and murdered her, and then removed her body in the dark, in the night time. Um, I'm just guessing, I'm just throwing ideas out there, thoughts out there, and then maybe he waited a couple of days, and then reported her missing. And then again, maybe he didn't have anything whatsoever to do with it, but, you know, we always go to the last person known to have been with them or spoke to them, right? So he was ruled out by, as, uh, by the police as a suspect, and they really had nothing more to go on. So as of today, her case remains unsolved, and there's really been no other suspects. And without a body, without any remains having been found, um, they can't really say that she's dead or that she died then. But my guess, just from common sense and common denominator here, is that this man that she was scheduled to have dinner with had some had some more knowledge of what happened to her than he said. And thanks for listening.